Welcome to Adventure Cities, where we're exploring Portland, Oregon. Portland, Oregon used to seem like a well-kept secret, with all the advantages of a major city, but the feel of a welcoming small town hugging the banks of the Willamette River and surrounded by nature, with the Tualatin Valley and the mighty Mount Hood just a short drive away. Now the secret is out, with visitors flocking here to enjoy the simple pleasures from beer drinking to bike riding as they embrace the effortless laid-back vibe and quirky energy that's made this city a haven for artists and creatives. It's also a haven for donut lovers, myself included. Portland is the sister city of Sapporo, Japan, and if you look hard enough, you can find plenty of similarities from a love of bike culture to bizarre vending machines. There are eight legs on offer, but one was more than enough. Actually, that's all right. Arguably, the city's hippest neighborhood is Lower East Burnside, a monument to Portland's DIY culture. Portland has a unique vibe that's always appealed to mavericks, outsiders, and creatives. And the skate scene fits perfectly into that. The locals make it look effortless, so... Knees bent and stomp forward. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> that was it. And you like, you had it. Based at the Mill Shop and Co-op, Maple XO is a fascinating female-run enterprise with a unique approach to recycling. So we take old skateboards, like ones that can't be skated anymore. Um, we bring them into our wood shop and using like traditional power tools and elbow grease, <laughs> yeah. um, we turn them into jewelry. Wow. Yeah. Portland has an almost unfair abundance of natural beauty within easy reach. If you want to embrace it yourself, look no further than First Nature Tours, an adventure company which prides itself on blending activities into the ultimate thrill seekers day out. What really sets First Nature apart as a tour operator is that everything we do is custom. So you can come at us with the most extreme idea in the world where you want to go skiing in the morning and have a winery lunch in Willamette Valley and then head out to the Oregon coast and go surfing, for instance. And we can put that together with you with a guide, with an itinerary, transportation, and all the little pieces that you need to have a perfect day. We're going to be going through something called the toilet bowl. So let's see if we get flushed. Our adventure day starts as a team with blue sky rafting, paddling together to tackle some of the more creatively christened rapids on the Upper Clackamas River. The Upper Clackamas offers the perfect amount of splashiness to keep the gang focused and our adrenaline pumping throughout the ride. Next up on our adrenaline fueled day out in Tualatin Valley is the Tree to Tree Aerial Adventure Park, a place where people of all ages and fitness levels can ascend into the tree canopy and channel their inner Tarzan or Jane or Ewok. Yeah! Oh! Now that's good fun. That's good, clean aerial fun. Kieran had told me to pack a blazer for the last activity of the day, and now I find out why. We're ending the adventure in high style with a heli wine tour departing from a rooftop in downtown Portland back out to Tualatin Valley, where some of the area's finest vineyards are based. Now this is a quick and effortless way to hop between some truly epic glasses of wine. So each one of these experiences, because they're so small and such a boutique winery, you'll be able to oftentimes talk with the winemaker or even talk with the owner. It used to be that when people made rosé, they would, they'd catch what fell off the conveyor on the sorting table and then turn it into wine. We specifically grow the fruit to make rosé. The next stop on our wine tour has a funny story about their rosé too. Well, it's named after a, a song by the band Fish. Oh, really? So our uh, winemaker, Andrew Kirkland, and the owner's son, Jeff, are huge Fish fans. All right. So uh, any concert within, I don't know, 2,000 miles, if they're there. The third stop on our wine tour involves an intriguing insight into how the best Oregon Reds are perfected. So the wine thief is how we sample the barrels, um, and uh, that allows us to come in the top here and pull a little sample of Pinot Noir. Every month we'll, we'll come through and sample them, just make sure they're doing all right, uh, that they're on track with their maturation process. Me and all of my siblings, we each have our own block of grapes that 
is named with our middle name, so I'm Laura Olivia, and this is, of course, my favorite wine that we make. Cheers. <laughs> One thing that is excellent to do during and after drinking is play bocce ball. There's something perfect about great weather, great company, and a great game of bocce, especially when you've got a great glass of wine in your hand. The meandering Willamette and Columbia rivers which frame the city of Portland are comforting ever-presence for locals and visitors alike. The latter river, which is part of Oregon's Mount Hood territory, is also surprisingly a big draw for monster hunters, more specifically, Sasquatch spotters. For decades, people have seen Sasquatch on the banks of this river. Where is he? I mean, I can't see him now. Well, uh, the first thing we got to talk about is how there isn't just one Sasquatch, it's a whole species. Wow. And they're living on both sides of the Columbia River and crossing in between in places like the Gifford Pinchot and the Mount Hood National Forest and the Bull Run Watershed. They're all over in there. Wow. So how do they cross the river then? Do they have little, little hairy boats or? <laughs> they swim. Sadly, no luck on the Bigfoot sighting, but our boat trip inspires me to explore Portland's river network further. And for that, I seek out former extreme kayaking champion, Sam Drevo, who now runs public paddling tours from Oregon City, just south of Portland. This bridge right here, this is the Westland Oregon City Bridge, and it's the first single span arch bridge ever built in the world. Wow. I call this tour where industry meets nature, some of the very earliest times in Oregon's history and really the West Coast histories in the United States started right here. After learning about the early explorers and settlers, Sam challenges me to overcome some barriers of my own. Ah, yeah! Oh, yeah! <laughs> After the hard work in the kayak, Sam switches us to a more comfortable canoe and has a special treat in store at the end of the afternoon. Now, believe it or not, this is a concert. It's called Music on the Water. And I've heard of crowd surfing, but this is crowd paddling. Music on the Water is a great local tradition, attracting guests in all manner of human-powered watercraft, from canoes to stand-up paddleboards as local singer-songwriters entertain them with their latest tunes, drifting down the river together into another show-stopping Oregon sunset. For my final adventure, we dive into a fusion of food and forest. So why are you cooking on a cedar plank? I'm from Texas, I like to smoke everything, so I think the slower and longer you cook anything over smoke, the more smoke and flavor is gonna translate into the dish. This is a really special event. It's a collaborative effort uh, between Grandford Brewing and Expedition Old Growth. We'll climb some trees, camp in trees, cook some great food and pair it with wonderful beer. And great food it is. This has got to be one of the best backyard cookouts ever. <laughs> Cheers. With a full belly after dinner, it's finally time to head up to bed. And how high are we gonna go? Oh, probably about 150 feet. Wow, awesome. The trunk will definitely get smaller as we get up, but it, it's very beautiful. All right, and um, it's a Douglas fir. Douglas fir. Just going on a walk for 10 minutes, just on a sidewalk, stimulates like 60% of your brain. I feel like this it stimulates all 100% of your brain, all at once. This isn't like the tree climbing that I was used to as a kid. This is more like mountain climbing. It's basically an enormous vertical wooden mountain. Damien makes it look so easy, but even with his help, this is the hardest I've ever had to work to climb into bed. This is the most elevated I've ever experienced when it comes to a bed for the night, up in the boughs of an enormous Douglas fir in the middle of Oregon. Portland is a city where the good life is celebrated, embraced, and shared. Yes, it's a hub for artists, designers, and musicians, but it's also a place for adventurers and outdoor enthusiasts of all types and ages, from rivers and waterfalls to forests and vineyards. Having this much natural beauty within touching distance makes Portland a uniquely exciting destination.